Hi. Um, so we at the health department love data, but we don't like technology. So <laughs> we're very thankful for our Silver Bow IT staff for their support. They're unbelievable. So thank you. Um, I'm told I probably need to recap, so um, I'll do that. Uh, let's just briefly recap. As of noon this morning, the county had 1,097 cases, which is an addition of 33 cases just this morning. And so we feel uh, with our evening cases that come in, they seem to come in in the morning and the evening. We'll have additional cases today. As of noon, we have 333 active cases in Butte Silver Bow. We have two additional fatalities. These fatalities of our legacy residents have occurred at Copper Ridge. Those are in addition to the 12 residents that have passed away at Continental Care and Rehab or affiliated with Continental Care and Rehab. As I was saying, one of the metrics that we follow is the cases per 100,000 population. U Silver Bow is at 84. That puts our county ahead of Yellowstone, Missoula, Lewis and Clark, and Deer Lodge counties for that particular metric. Anything over 25, and again, we're at 84, is defined as being in the red zone risk level by the Harvard Global Health Institute. And so we are absolutely in the wrong area for that metric. Again, our positivity rate is at 19.6, which means about five, one in five people who are testing in Butte are testing positive. As I was saying for the week of October 30th through November 6th, the health department determined that 693 individuals were close contacts who needed to be quarantined and tested. This particular metric tells us that the public health precautions being um, levied are, are not being bought into by a segment of our public to social distance, to avoid large crowds, to wear a mask. Um, this means that socialization is occurring. It is my job to keep kids in an in-classroom setting in the K through 12 and campus environments. We know that when children and young students are forced to return to remote learning environments, not every student has the internet. Uh, we know that many, many students receive two meals at school. We know that they're safe at school. Um, it is our intent to keep that in-classroom instruction going. We wake up thinking about that. Additionally, it is my job to ensure that I'm working with our hospital, St. James Healthcare, and our clinics, Southwest Montana Community Health Center, Mercury Street Medical, and the SCL Medical Group, formerly known as Rocky Mountain Clinic, we cannot have our hospital inpatient or ICU beds at capacity or beyond. That is my job. This is why what we're trying to prevent. I would like to um, call up Dr. Jennifer Davenport from St. James Healthcare. Dr. Davenport is the Chief Medical Officer for St. James Healthcare. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Jennifer Davenport, Chief Medical Officer at St. James Healthcare. St. James has been taking care of the Butte Silver Bow community for over a century. We mean to be here going forward. We mean to take care of our community for all of its needs. We have capacity in the hospital. We have the ability to surge should we need it. Um, and we have the staffing and plans to go along with it. We want you to continue to come get care at St. James but we also want to not have our hospitals so full that our staff are feeling stressed. And we ask the community to do their part to help us keep the numbers down as low as we can. So please wear your mask, please stay at home if at all possible, social distance and don't touch your face, wash your hands and be a good community citizen to take care of our community so that our hospital can continue to take care of you. Thank you.
I would like to thank St. James Healthcare for their incredible partnership since the beginning of this event. Now I would like to call up Dr. Shauna Yates, who is the Chief Executive Officer for Southwest Montana Community Health Center. Thank you, Karen. My name is Shauna Yates. I'm a family physician and mostly uh, specialize in geriatrics. I stand before you today to discuss with you about some of the changes and some of the actions that are happening at Southwest Montana Community Health Center. Our health center serves a number of counties in the local area, and we have been collaborating with the hospitals and with public health departments to help offer testing and contact tracing for the illness of COVID-19. Couple of facts I want everyone to know. The rapid test or the antigen test is a test that we are providing at the health center. This test is best used for people who are symptomatic, that it is when it is the most specific and sensitive. And so we would ask for people who are exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19 to call the clinic. We have changed our workflows a little bit in order to help meet the demand. And in the last week, we've seen a doubling of the demand. So one of the things that we are doing is we are scheduling most people through a triage nurse to determine if they need a call where they would get a call with a medical provider and a rapid test in the parking lot. This seems to be working fairly effectively. We did 48 of those tests yesterday and over half of them were positive. When I left the clinic this morning, we were up over 30 this morning and half of them are also positive. The clinic also has an acute care wing. In our acute care wing, we are able to see those people that triage to having higher level of symptoms and need to have a hands-on touch with our team. Those people will have the ability to be seen and have prescriptions ordered for them appropriately. I come before you today for two specific requests. Number one, I ask for your patience. And number two, I ask for your participation. Number one is patience. So this illness is not going away. I think as all of you have seen, our counties were ready and we were fired up to do this in March. But a lot of us are tired. A lot of us are waxing and waning in our belief of what this is. COVID-19 is not a cold. For some of you, yes, it might only be a cold. But COVID-19 is not a cold. It can exhibit a very systemic reaction through the entire body and people can have long-term effects from the illness. They can die suddenly from the illness, and it does not care whether you are young or old. Right now, we are seeing a great deal of our seniors who have been cooped up, locked up for over 10 months in our county because they are old and they are vulnerable. Our elders deserve our respect in this. They deserve us to go about our day making sure that we do not continue to perpetuate this illness in our county. Those seniors will not see their family members and the addition of their greater families until this virus stops. So our facilities right now are in total lockdown and many of them right now are fighting for their lives. So I come here asking for your participation. Every single one of us has to do this. We come up here today with our suit of armor. We're wearing our mask everywhere we go. We are wearing eye protection everywhere we go so that we do not get this illness. We're doing the best we can, but if we continue to get together in large groups, if we continue to believe that it won't affect me, if we continue to go about our day like this is not a big deal, it may very well affect you or somebody very, very close to you. So those are the two things that I ask is for your patience. At the health center, we are at risk of losing staff and not having enough people to meet the demands. And so there's the other aspect of this. Yesterday on the phone, between eight and nine o'clock in the morning, we served almost 150 telephone calls. 70 of them had to go to voicemail because we don't have the staffing to right now continue to meet the demand. So it is very, very important that we start to halt the virus, turn it in the other direction. And this will mean every single one of you participating. So at this stage of the game, you can be tested. If you are symptomatic, please call the health center. We are happy to get you triaged through the nurse, determine whether you need a rapid quick test in the parking lot or to be seen by a provider. If you have been identified as a contact, 
The health department will call you and we have contact tracing set up. That is PCR testing. It takes a couple of days to come back and we are still only notifying positives because of the manpower. The final straw to all of this will be the rate limiting steps. The rate limiting steps right now in our faction of this at the health clinic is number one staff and number two will be supplies. So we are burning through a lot of supplies right now. And the supply chains, given that this is going on all over the country, are really not dumping stuff on our door on a daily basis. So I truly ask everybody's patience and your participation. Thank you. Since March, um, the county has taken this event very seriously. Chief Executive Palmer called together a group of county officials to help the health department and the Board of Health manage this event. And with that, I would like to call to the podium Chief Executive Dave Palmer, whose partnership in this event um, has been incredible. Well, thank you, Karen. Good afternoon. I wish we were here for happier times, but that's not the case. Our numbers continue to rise in Butte Silver Bow and all of Southwest Montana. And in order to get a handle on that, we have to change the rules a little bit. And it's going to be tough on businesses and everyone, but um, we're all going to have to pull together. And please heed the advice of our medical professionals here that you just heard from and all of us. I'm here as Chief Executive of Butte Silver Bow to let everyone know that we support the decisions of the Butte Silver Bow Health Board and the Health Department. And uh, there's going to be some new guidelines set up out this afternoon. And we're going to follow suit by closing down the courthouse again to the general public. It'll be open uh, through email. There'll be a drop box out in front. Same with the water division, the drop boxes the way it was at the very beginning in March. We have to do everything possible to get back to a new normal and get back to our old normal, which hopefully will happen sometime in the near future. But until then, please wear your mask, social distance, wash your hands, and do everything else and follow the guidelines as set out by the health department and the medical professionals. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. The county's new chief executive, J.P. Gallagher, could not be here today. Uh, he is out of town. JP emailed me last evening and wanted me to read a statement on his behalf. In light of the current increase in COVID cases in Butte Silver Bow, I believe it is my responsibility as the newly elected chief executive of Butte Silver Bow to issue a statement. Our community has seen unprecedented increase in COVID-19 infection in Butte Silver Bow. It is critically important that every Butte Silver Bow resident follow the new order that Butte Silver Bow Health Sullivan will be issuing today. Butte Tough is doing the right thing, even if it feels uncomfortable. We need commitment from our community leaders and citizens to follow the science and adhere to the new order. How we respond will determine if schools and businesses can stay open. We must protect the health and safety of our citizens. I ask every citizen to choose to be a hero in our community by following the new COVID-19 Health Department order, which I'll announce here in a minute. We are a resilient community that will bounce back from this pandemic. Respectfully, J.P. Gallagher. With that, I would like to call to the podium before I announce our new measures, Cindy Shaw, Cindy Shaw is a Butte Silver Bow County Commissioner and a member of the Butte Silver Bow Board of Health. Thank you, Karen. And thank you all for being here. I thank our IT department for setting this up. This is a daunting thing. Uh, the council has been going through remote meetings for eight, 10 months now, and it's, it's a challenge for everybody. But uh, and I wanted to say, give my heartfelt, um, just sad feelings toward the folks that have died in Butte. We never thought this would happen to us. Um, I do a lot of entertaining at the nursing home, as everyone knows that, for 20 years. And 
so many of these people are, were, you know, peeps of mine. So I just want to say our heartfelt sympathies toward those families. I also want to say that we are Butte Tough and that Butte is going to get through this. We will all appreciate things a lot more when it's all said and done. But uh, I also wanted to say that the council as a whole, there's 12 of us, we all represent districts. My district's right, right here, I live up the street. And uh, we also completely support, I as a council member, as a board of health member, and as a citizen, support these restrictions and other things that we'll be doing today. I was very worried that we would have to close down businesses, which we are not. We are trying to keep us open because frankly, Butte just can't handle a lot more of this and we are all ready to see some relief. But again, uh, at four o'clock today, we're having a special meeting and the council will be approving a statement from us, from your legislative branch uh, to the community to show our support. And we look at it as a three-legged stool, our health department, the health professionals and all our emergency operations, everyone involved in this is the second, but the third is our community. We all need to get together and think of not ourselves, but others, because when we wear a mask, we're doing it for everybody else and all the other things that we're trying to do. We'll get through this. Um, just know your council is behind this. I think I speak for everyone. I believe it will be in the paper tomorrow, our, our uh, take on everything and how we think that we as a community can do this and bring it all together. Thank you all for being here. I think I'm preaching to the choir pretty much here, but for those that are listening, please take this seriously because it is not, uh, it's, it's serious and there's just no other way of putting it. And I really hope that we can get through this together with the least amount of sickness and death. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Shaw. And with that, um, I would like to announce what our new measures will be. We're calling it the flatten the curve effort. Um, our goal is to decrease our COVID-19 incident um, rate to 25 cases per 100,000. Again, we're at 84. Um, and we would like to move our positivity rate to below 10. That is our goal. So um, the, the purposes above and beyond that, we want to prevent uncontrollable spread. We want to keep our schools and our cap campuses open. We want our hospital to be healthy and uh, to continue excellent quality care. We want to protect our high risk populations, which include our legacy residents and we want to protect essential services. Therefore, effective at 10 o'clock tomorrow at 8 a.m., we will limit business capacity to 50%. We're currently at 75%. Anything, uh, currently, anything over uh, 50 people in regard to an activity or group gathering needs to be re reviewed by the health department. We're moving that to 25 people. We will have al alcohol service at bars, casinos, distilleries, and other like uh, establishments to stop at 10 p.m. We're currently at 12.30 p.m. And we're asking out of the bottom of our hearts, this is not an order, but we're asking you to stay at home. If you have to go to work, we get it. If you have to get groceries, we get it, but we're asking this community in an advisory sort of way to please stay home. We will reassess all of this on December 1 and then weekly thereafter. If our goal is met, 25 cases per 100,000 and a positivity rate of below 10, we will look at loosening and lifting the restrictions. If our goals are not met, we will maintain our restrictions. If we're on fire, quite frankly, we'll look at tightening our restrictions. Additionally, as Chief Executive Palmer indicated, the courthouse, which provides essential government services, will be closed at 8 a.m. Uh, tomorrow, which happens to be Veterans Day. 
Uh, but thereafter, those essential government services will be delivered remotely or in other ways that we'll illustrate. Um, appendices accompany the order for new restrictions. We have an appendix that will provide guidance on um, events and gatherings with more than 25 people. We will have an appendix for personal care services such as uh, salons, barber shops, body art establishments, massage therapy, and we, we will have an appendix for a personal, uh, excuse me, for, give me one minute here. An additional appendix for retail business. Um, we will be asking our business community, um, our retail community, to re-examine the safety plans that they've already done. We will be in consult with them. Additionally, through new funding provided by the CARES Act, we will be retaining temporary per diem uh, COVID-19 education liaisons. So we'll be out in the community educating with our uh, additional temporary staff that will include on weekends and in the evenings um, to educate people about what we're trying to do. Um, we recognize the difficulty this portrays for our community, but we can say that Butte is indeed tough and we're asking our community to partner with us to undertake this effort. I appreciate everything that you have done uh, to date to help us in this effort. And with that, I'm open to questions. Mr. Larson. Mr. Larson from Butte News asked whether there will be any effort to enforce the mask mandate Indeed, there will. With the retention, uh, we have four core staff at the health department currently in our environmental health division who uh, perform compliance. And with our additional COVID-19 education liaisons, we'll be able to be out in the evenings and on the weekends to ensure that people are wearing masks. Any other questions? Mr. Michael. You know, in Montana, not every public health jurisdiction has the support of their county commissioners, nor do they have the support of their sheriff or their county attorney. How lucky are we in Butte to have the support of all three of those entities um, and our chief executive? Um, that is not uh, happening throughout Montana. When we have asked our sheriff for assistance, it has been provided. When we have asked our county attorney for assistance, it has been provided. The Council of Commissioners will relay today their support for what we're trying to do. And our mayor, our chief executive, has been behind us all the way. And our incoming chief executive has expressed nothing but support. I feel lucky to live in this community. If there are no other questions, yes, Mr. Amy. Uh, Mr. Amy asked whether we can do anything to prompt compliance in private settings such as homes. No, there is not. And we're not going that route. We, um, you know, I saw things on social media in regard to uh, don't stop Halloween, don't stop Thanksgiving, don't stop Christmas. Um, that's ridiculous. We would never do that. And, and we would never infringe on on the privacy of our residents. What we are asking, however, is for our residents to do their part. We feel, my own family included, that Thanksgiving and Christmas will look different this year, and we're willing to do that as a family. And I'm, I'm hoping that is um, 
what will be carried out in, in the midst of our community. Mr. Larson. Okay. Under Montana statute, there is um, a law regarding what we can do for businesses not complying. Um, we will take that to the county attorney for follow-up. We have done that already. And um, if first, the philosophy of the health department is to be consultative and educational. Um, and uh, if, if that doesn't work, we provide a little more uh, direction for them. Ultimately, we go to the county attorney. There is statute related to penalty up to and including closure. On, um, on our computer here, we have uh, a question from uh, reporter Maritza uh, Gorjo. I hope I didn't slaughter your last name. I'm wondering about continental care and rehab, and if there's any oversight or new recommendations for that facility based on the recent surge in cases and deaths. I can tell you that the staff at continental care and rehab has gone above and beyond um, in, in the measures that they've taken to keep their residents safe. They have called in the state of Montana, their uh, professional infection control team. They're very, very busy. But on top of that, they have called in the state of Montana, the infection control people to uh, work with them on anything they haven't thought of um, to develop an infection control plan that would even go above and beyond what they already have. Well, with that, I want to thank all of you for attending today and uh, thank you very much and be safe. Yeah. Thank you.